All right, get ready to dive deep because today we are talking about those beautiful coral caves, you know, the stunning little islands scattered around on tropical reefs. We've got some amazing research from Geonadir, the drone mapping experts, and it's going to blow your mind. They're changing how we see those sandy shores. Yeah, it's really fascinating stuff. You might think of caves as these kind of permanent fixtures, just chunks of rock hanging out in the sun, right? Right. But get this, they're constantly changing. This Geonadir deep dive has some really eye-opening information about how dynamic these little islands actually are. Yeah, it's incredible. What's so interesting about caves is that they're always in motion. They're formed from coral debris, sand, shells, all shaped by those powerful ocean currents, waves, storms, the works. Yeah. It makes them constantly evolve and shift. I love that the article even calls them living systems. Yeah. It really gets the point across that they are not just some lifeless piece of land. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Imagine like a bird building its nest on a K, but the ground beneath that nest is always moving, growing, eroding. It's amazing how adaptable nature is, Yeah. but it also shows the challenges these ecosystems face, especially with rising sea levels and climate change. Yeah, for sure. Big challenges. It's like trying to study a moving target, which is where this really cool drone technology comes in. We're not just talking about taking pretty pictures from above. No, no, not at all. This is next level stuff. Drones are changing how we keep track of these environments. Think mm -hmm. about the old ways of doing it. Slow, expensive, limited in what you can cover. Drones just come in with speed, efficiency, and they can gather incredibly precise data so often. Yeah. It's really incredible. And they're pulling out some really cool terms in this article. Digital elevation models, or DEMS for short, and orthomosaics. For those of us who aren't, you know, map makers, what are we even talking about here? Okay, so think of it like, imagine you are playing a video game that has these super detailed, like, realistic... 3D environments. That's kind of what these DEMs are like, but for these Ks. Oh, wow. They allow researchers to see even the tiniest changes in the Ks' shape, size, and elevation. So it's like having a high-definition time-lapse of the island changing over time. Yes, exactly. And speaking of which, their article mentions Taylor K as a really great example of how much these Ks can transform. Have you seen the imagery? I have. It's pretty amazing. It's mind-blowing. It really highlights why this kind of detail tracking is so important. By looking at how these caves react to things like storms or even just the regular tides, we can start to predict what might happen in the future, how they'll be impacted. Yeah. And that's super valuable information for anyone working on conservation efforts. For sure. And, you know, speaking of conservation, I was really struck by how much Geonadir emphasizes working together. They're really into sharing their findings with the whole scientific community. It's not about keeping the data to themselves. It's about using it for a bigger purpose. Absolutely. And that kind of collaborative approach is changing the game in a really positive way. Totally. Geonator's platform lets researchers from different organizations combine all their data, and that creates a much richer, more complete understanding of these ecosystems. They even use the term uh, fair data. Have you heard of it? Right. Findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Yeah. Basically, it's like making sure all that great information is out there for anyone who can use it to understand and protect these really delicate environments. Precisely. And it just goes to show that science is a team sport, right? Right. The more we share what we know, the better we are at tackling these big environmental problems, especially when it comes to these you know, ever-changing islands. Totally. And here's where it gets really interesting. Those little markers you sometimes see in aerial photos, they often yeah. blend into the background, but they're called ground control points or GCPs, and they have a much bigger job than you might think. Yeah, they're easy to miss, aren't they? Totally. But these GCPs are essential for making sure that the data captured by the drones is accurate, especially when it comes to those 3D elevation models we talked about before. So they're like the unsung heroes of accurate mapping. Precisely. But how do these GCPs actually work? I'll admit, I haven't really thought about them much before. Think of them like anchors. You know, they kind of tie the drone's view to the real world. Okay. They are these markers put in very specific places, and we know exactly where they are. And by including them when we're looking at the data, researchers can connect the dots between those aerial images and what's really there on the ground. So they're like the reference points that say surveyors use to make right. sure their measurements are accurate. Exactly. It's all about making sure everything lines up, that the drone data matches the reality on the ground. Which is really important with something like a Coral K that's changing all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Even a tiny shift could mean a lot. Oh, absolutely. Even what seems like a small change in a K's elevation, you were talking 
centimeters here, it can tell us a lot. Wow. Like, is it eroding? Is it growing? Has it moved? Those GCPs give us that really precise measurement we need to see those subtle changes happening over time. It's amazing how such a small detail can make such a big difference in what we know. It says a lot about how careful you have to be with this type of research. For sure. And when you combine that attention to detail with the power of using drones and everyone sharing their data, like we were talking about, yeah, it's a big deal. We are entering this whole new level of understanding and protecting these constantly changing places. Yeah. It's an exciting time. It really feels like everything is coming together, the technology, the data sharing, the careful analysis to show us a much clearer picture of how these islands work. And it's not even just about understanding these specific islands. What we are learning by studying Ks has implications that go way beyond that. You mean like understanding how coastlines in general are changing? Exactly. As sea levels rise everywhere, understanding how these islands evolve, how they adapt, even how they might disappear will be so crucial for coastal areas and ecosystems all over the world. Yeah, that makes sense. What we're learning from Ks can be used to create strategies for managing and protecting those coastal areas on a much, much bigger scale. So these islands that seem so small, they're like a mini version of what's happening on coastlines all over the planet. Yes, exactly. Wow. And that's what I love about science, uncovering these connections you know, that reveal the bigger picture. It definitely makes you see those perfect island photos in a whole new way, doesn't it? They're not just pretty pictures. They are these complex, constantly changing landscapes that tell us a lot about what might happen to our planet. Absolutely. And as we face these growing challenges with climate change, those clues become even more important for us to figure out. That's for sure. So where do we go from here? What's the next step in understanding these dynamic places and the forces that shape them? That is the million dollar question. Yeah. We may not have all the answers right now, but the research that groups like Geonator and their partners are doing is giving us the tools and the information we need to make smarter choices about how we manage and protect these really fragile places. Mm. And hopefully their work will inspire even more people to get involved in this really important research. Totally. After all, these islands are a part of our planet's heritage. Understanding them is super important, not just for them to survive, but in many ways, for us to survive, too. Couldn't have said it better myself. This has been an incredible look into the world of coral caves. I know I've learned so much. These islands are so much more than meets the eye. They absolutely are. And the more we understand these incredible dynamic landforms, the better equipped we will be to protect them, not just for their own good, but for all of us as well. Well said. And to our listeners, we hope this deep dive has made you curious and given you a new perspective on these natural wonders. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and never underestimate the power of a little curiosity. Really makes you think, doesn't it? These little islands, we think of them as just dots on a map, but they're so important for our planet. Absolutely. It's like a reminder that even the smallest places can make a big difference. Yeah. What happens on those Ks affects everything around them. Right. Knows how connected everything on Earth really is. I know. I'm definitely going to be looking at those pictures of island paradises a little differently now. Me too. They're not just pretty places. Yeah. They're these like dynamic, changing environments with important stories to tell. Totally. And the more we learn about those stories, especially with these amazing technologies and by working together, the better we can deal with a changing world. This deep dive has been incredible. I've learned so much. Ks are way more than meets the eye. They really are. And the more we understand these fascinating, always changing landforms, the better we can protect them. For sure. Not just for them, but for us too. Exactly. Well said. And to all of you listening, we hope this has sparked your curiosity about these little wonders of nature. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and never lose that curiosity.